we're going to be exploring common types of graphs to help you decide which type of graph you should create given certain data sets. We'll begin by looking at why do we use graphs. And then we'll examine four common types of graphs. The column graph, the histogram, the scatter plot, and the line graph. So why do we use graphs? Sometimes, when we're given a series of data, such as this one on the right-hand side, it may be difficult for us to interpret. The graph is going to help us to better visualize that data so that we can infer useful information. For example, let's look at this data presented on the right-hand side. This table can then be plotted onto a graph, and it can look like this. As we can see, the year is plotted on the x-axis, while the frequency is plotted on the y-axis. By plotting these points in, what we notice is that the population of bears is increasing, while the populations of dolphins is decreasing, and the whales is mostly unchanged. Four common types of graph are the column graph, the histogram, the scatter plot, and the line graph. Let's start by discussing what a column graph is. So what is a column graph? A column graph, which is a vertical bar graph, is likely the most common type of graph you'll come across. In column graphs, the height of each bar is going to represent the magnitude on the y-axis, while the x-axis is going to display discrete categories. Because of this format, it makes column graphs ideal for comparing between categories and groups, and this is going to be used typically where there is a larger number of categories. The categories should also follow a natural hierarchy to easily compare between them. So an example might be we're looking at the effect of different brands of fertilizer on the growth rate. On our x-axis, we're going to have different fertilizer brands, while the y-axis is going to show us how much the plant grows over maybe a period of time of, say, one month. How about a histogram? Well, a histogram is a column-like chart that appears similar to the column graph we looked at previously. However, in this case, the height of the bar is going to represent the population size on the y-axis, while the x-axis consists of what we call bins that can either have a range of equal values or it can have discrete values. So in this case, we have a range of equal values. We can see that each of these bins is going to contain a range of three from nine to 12, 13 to 16, 17 to 20, 21 to 24, 25 to 28, and 29 to 32. However, in this case, we are going to have bins which have discrete values. So this is the frequency of 18, 19, 20, all the way to 25. Histograms are going to be used when we want to identify data distribution. This means they help us understand broader patterns that are going to exist, particularly for large data sets. An example that we've used here is we want to look at the distribution of plant height for 100 plants that were grown over the same period of time. So what is a scatter plot? A scatter plot is a simple type of graph where the data is represented by individual points in this case x, which have been plotted onto the graph. Scatter plots are used where both axes have numerical or quantitative data. So when do we use a scatter plot? Since both the x and the y axes contains quantitative data, the scatter plot can help to quickly identify correlations between numerical values. So the independent variable is going to be on the x axis, while the dependent variable is on the y axis, and then we can simply plot those values in using a marker. While the scatter plot can help us with identifying correlations, it can also help us identify no clear relationship or non correlations. So, an example of when we might use a scatter plot is if we wanted to examine the effect of the volume of water given each day on plant growth. Imagine we are adding a different amount of water per day and we're looking at how the plant is growing over a period of time. Here we have two sets of quantitative data, and therefore we are going to use the scatter plot. Usually, when we are displaying data using a scatter plot, a line of best fit is included to help better visualize our trend. However, the trend does not necessarily imply causation and may be a result of coincidence or a third variable that was not considered. 
If the trend of the scatter plot appears to be non-linear, we will use the curve of best fit instead. The curve of best fit should be a single unbroken line, which fits approximately in between the plotted data points. The last type of graph is a line graph. A line graph is drawn when a series of data is plotted and then connected by a line. It is important to notice and distinguish between the line graph and the scatter plot by the fact that the data points that are plotted on a line graph are connected. The x axis is usually going to represent time, while the y axis can be any other variable. In this case, the data which is given to us shows the growth of a plant over a period of six months from January, February, March, April, May, June. We use line graphs to help visualize trends since the given data is difficult to interpret and the line graph helps us to show the trend of data over a period of time. This is similar to the scatter plot, however you can notice that we have dotted the dots. We use line graphs to help visualize trends since the given data may be difficult for us to interpret. So this line graph is going to show us the trend of the data over a period of time, where we see throughout the months both plants 1, 2 and 3 are getting larger in size. In this next example, we are looking at the duration of the first three days of each month. If we look at the data which has been plotted, we can see that there is a non-linear trend or no clear trend. Here we can review a summary of our four types of graphs. Column graphs are going to represent discrete data and are utilized for comparing categorical data. Histograms, which look similar to column graphs, display the distributions of numerical data with the x-axis bins either being discrete or ranges of data. Scatter plots are used when there are two discrete continuous variables and allow us to visualize correlations. These can be summarized using the line of best fit. However, these correlations do not necessarily imply causation in case there is an extraneous variable that has not been accounted for. Line graphs are going to help us display trends over a period of time, where the data points are connected by a line. Line graphs are used where there is a no real independent variable, so in this case it's time, and it can help us identify variable changes since we are really only looking at a single variable.